Hello and welcome to a new art video. In today's video I'm going to be creating some very simple colour mixing charts and I've got some gouache paints and some watercolour paints and you can do this for both. You can do it with gouache and you can do it with watercolour. You can do it with oils as well but today I'm just going to be doing the gouache to just to show you an example and I'm going to be using primary colours and there's actually two sets of primary colours there's the main set of primary colours which are on the cooler side and then there's a, like a secondary primary set of colours which are a more warmer version for example with these gouache we've got primary red primary blue and primary yellow those are the cold colours and we've got spectrum red, ultramarine and permanent yellow deep and those are a warmer version so these are the warm colours and these are the cool colours and it's the same with the watercolours as well now they're named different, they've got different names the watercolours, these are Winsor Newton I'm using by the way for this example different brands will have different names but if you want to do this with the Winsor & Newton primary colours the cool primary colours are called Permanent Rose, Windsor Blue Red Shade and Windsor Lemon and the more warmer primary colours are Scarlet Lake, French Ultramarine and Windsor Yellow and these are exactly what Windsor Newton recommend as the two sets of primary colours so today I'm just going to be doing the gouache just to give you an example but if you're using watercolours you, you can just do the exact same thing or even oils if you're using oils so what I've got is I've just got one paintbrush it's just a number seven round paintbrush synthetic it's not animal hair I've got a mixing palette I've got the paints I've got a couple of jars of clean water and I've got a big tub of water just for washing the paint the paint off the brushes with so because we need some pure clear water for the colour mixing we can't use dirty water for that I've also got these little charts that I've made now I've cut up pieces of watercolour paper and I've cut them so that they will fit my little A5 file because I find this is easier I have all my colour samples of all my art products in this and I put them in the little A5 plastic wallets so you want to cut out some watercolour paper it doesn't have to fit exact this is actually smaller than the wallet but as long as it'll go in the wallet that's all you want so with this watercolour paper I've made two thin lines across the top here so that I can write some information in there and then I've made this grid and it's six down and nine across okay and I've made four of those because I'll need two for the primary cool colours and I'll need two for the primary warm colours as well so first of all the top line I'm going to write exactly what the paints are so the Windsor and Newton designers gouache So first of all, with the three cool primary colours, I'm going to mix primary red. So I'll write that above this first box here. Primary red. And then in the very middle box, I'm going to write primary blue. And then above the end box, I'm going to write primary yellow. So we'll be mixing the, the blue and the red together in this, these boxes here. And the blue and the yellow together in these boxes here. But then we need to mix the yellow and the red together. So we go on to a new page. And we do primary yellow. And then on the very middle one primary red and then next we'll move we'll be moving on to the the warmer shade
so so this red is called spectrum red and if you're using a different brand of paints and you don't know which colours to to buy if you go on the website of that brand they should tell you which colours they've named as their primary colours they do on the Windsor and Newton site so I'm presuming they're probably doing all the other brands as well and then the middle we're going to do the blue so it's ultramarine and then the yellow is called permanent yellow D and then we start off with the permanent yellow deep and we'll be mixing that with the spectrum red so above the middle column spec right spectrum red okay so put those aside because we're going to do the cool colors first so i'm just going to squeeze out a small amount of each color on the mixing tray So first of all I'm going to start with the primary red and I'm going to put the primary red in this box here so we know what the primary red looks like. So just get a little bit of water on your brush. And get some of the primary red but we don't want it too watery we want a good solid and then move it over away from the main block and then actually I'm just going to add a little bit more I'm going to make that a little bit more concentrated that colour and then we'll paint a block of the primary red just a square of that It's also best to have um, an, um, a, a cloth or some kitchen tissue just to wipe your brush off on. So I'll clean that off my brush. Now I've got some water, mix some of the clean mixing water on my brush and I'm gonna just add it to this paint here to water that down and then with that colour do another block of that lighter shade underneath and then add a little bit more water to make it even lighter shade and put that underneath that one and then add a even more water on your brush to water that down even further and do another lighter black and then carry on doing that all the way to the bottom making the paint lighter and lighter till you get your very lightest shade And then the last shade, just get a tiny little bit of that paint, water it down as much as you can, just to get the lightest colour possible. Right, next I'm going to do exactly the same for the primary blue.
Okay, so now I'm just going to get rid of that watery, really watered down paint because we need the space to start on some colour mixing. So now we're going to move on to the actual colour mixing. And so we want a mixture of these two colours together. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to mix the blue and the red together. But I will say it's not necessarily half and half because some strong because some paints are much stronger than the other. So this is to find the middle colour. So it's neither more blue or more red. It's a in the middle colour of both colours. So it should be a good strong purple colour. But like I say, it won't necessarily take the exact amount of paint of each colour. So first of all, I'll get some of the blue. Then I'll wash my brush off because I don't want to contaminate the red. And I'll just get a little bit of the red because it's quite a strong colour. Not quite as much and then just see how that goes. No, it definitely needs a bit more red. It's maybe not as strong as I thought. So I'll get a bit more of the red. I think that's still slightly slightly on the blue side so I'm just going to add a tiny little bit more red I think that's probably the perfect middle colour so I'll paint this on Then I'll just add a little bit of water to that, water it down, just like I did with the other colours. Actually, I don't think I've got enough paint. I'm going to have to make a little bit more of that up because I don't think that's enough. Add a more watery version of that, like I did earlier. Okay, so the next thing in this one, we're going to make another mix and it's going to be mainly red with just a touch of the blue. So the dominant colour is going to be the red and then in this one we'll do the opposite where the dominant colour is the blue with a touch of red and then see what different shades we can get from that as well.
Okay, and now I'll do the same again for this column, only I'll make the blue more dominant. okay so that's those ones done so that's the full kind of range of like purples that you can get from those two colors so you don't need to mess around mixing colors to try and find the color that you want if you do all your color mixture chart then you can just reference the color you want by looking at your chart so if i wanted this color here for example i know that i need i need my primary red and my primary blue but it'll be more red more of the red and then it'll be quite watered down quite a bit to get that shade um, and it's just a, a really brilliant tool to have and also while you're going through the process of making these charts you're really you know learning a good basic understanding of colour mixing so I definitely highly recommend it so next I'll move on to the yellow and we're going to get a bunch of greens here different shades of green and then I'll move on to the other card where I'll mix the yellow with the red and then we'll get all the orange shades and then I will do exactly the whole process again for the warm primary colours but I'll speed the camera up while I do all this and then we'll come back and look at all the different colours at the end that you can make from these primary colours.
okay so that's all those finished now so I'll just lay them all out so you can see these are the warm colors that's the range of warm colors and this is the range of the range that we got from the cold colors so as you can see just from three basic colors blue yellow and red you can get a massive range of colors so the cooler colors are a lot more vibrant you get all your vibrant colors from those ones and you can see the warm colours mixed are a lot more muted. You could go even further than that and make more and more colours by then mixing the cooler colours with the warmer colours. And that will produce even more interesting colours. But just doing it like this is a great start. I'm probably going to go, go on to mix even more and more colours together. But just for this video, this is a good example of you know how to get started with the colour mixing. So I hope you've enjoyed this video today. Please give me a thumbs up below and subscribe to my channel to see more art related videos. If you've got any questions just leave them in the comments below. I'll answer as soon as I can and thank you very much for watching.